Seeing YP highlights that are next. Mm -hmm. Our first one is Kyle Morrison, and he's going to be sharing about an exciting board game. I know it's hard to imagine Adventists creating a board game, yeah. right? <laughs> but you're going to hear about this GoYe board game in just a minute. And then Dr. Bowtie Bryan, mm -hmm. who is going to share from his experiences as well as a young professional. And uh, we're going to enjoy hearing from these two. Again, as you're listening, feel free to comment, let us know, and we'll be back in just a minute with more. Hey guys, well welcome to another YP highlight. And I'm really excited about this one because we are taking you all the way down to the beautiful land down under with my friend, Kyle Morrison. Good day, man. Hey, Kyle. Hey, buddy. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you, man. And uh, uh, great name, by the way. Thank you. You too. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I think our mothers were thinking the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, hey, man, it's, it's great to... Uh, Great to have you back on, well, great to have you for the first time, I guess. <laughs> Good to see you. It's been a while. Um, Kyle is a, a friend of mine, but he is also a marketing consultant, private contractor, and an entrepreneur down under. And Kyle, my first question to you is to get right to it. Um, just tell us a little bit about what you're up to in life now and where you're at on the journey. Sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's good. Good to see. You. And uh, at the moment, I'm a marketing consultant. I often get caught up in project management roles. Still, um, I work for the church administration at different levels. I've I've got to work with you a little bit uh, and your team, which has been fun. Yes. Um, but yeah, before that, I was uh, working for the conference and for the local church for four years. And um, yeah, I've seen an opportunity to help out in other ways and to use my skills a bit more. So at the moment, I'm a sole trader, which is a good change. That's awesome. So you were you were uh, you studied marketing right in school, mm. and, and then from there you went to study pastoral ministry and went that. Direction. Yeah, my my goal was to study theology, and by the time I got to college and enrolled, I just happened to be studying marketing instead, and. Uh, I had a year off to think about my actions, and then I got back to the theology, did that for a few years, and <laughs> then was picked up by the local church, actually in an administration role. My interview was so bad, they thought I was so cocky that they um, they didn't hire me straight away. <laughs> and so I ended up um, getting picked up by um, Matt Parra, who's an American, okay. in, uh, in an administrative role for a few years, and then that morphed into um, conference and local church sort of a role. So... Yeah, super blessed to be able to uh, assist in whatever way I can to serve the church. That's awesome. So you were actually, so you've been in, in various, you know, you were in uh, studying marketing, kind of a business side, and then you went towards the ministry side and administration, and then even in the local church pastoring role. Um, mm. And how, how did you get to become more back towards business now and, and following that passion? What why didn't you just want to stay on the pastoral track and, and do that kind of, yeah. you know, the pastor thing? There's a lot of really good pastors in, uh, in my conference. I know specifically that are just really good at soul winning, uh, evangelism, pastoral care, all the things that I'm really not that good at. And so uh, I think I just wanted to try and do better the things that God has blessed me with and, and let those experts do that job. And so, I think that I still have a lot to offer the church. Um, sometimes the church doesn't understand how that can add any value, but I have somewhat of a vision for how that could be helpful. And so I just wanted to pursue that and I can really see how God's blessed and led in that direction. So yeah, decided to take uh, a bit of a break from local church pastoral work and um, try and do some more marketing consulting because that's We've got to market the gospel, buddy. There's there's a lot of marketing going on and, and we're not so sharp in it. And so I want to try and sharpen my skills to help the church in that area. Why, why do you think uh, it's important for us to have that in this time, you know, in these days? Yeah, I think um, the world's moving so fast and um, the large, tall organizations don't tend to move very fast. We know that when we were a vibrant movement, we were a very flat movement in terms of organizational structure and um, I don't think it's anyone's fault specifically I think we just organizations grow over time and um, we're not as quick and responsive as we used to be often we're 10 years behind technology and trends and topics 
theological disputes. We're often 10 years behind. And so um, I think that the church is going to face a massive shortage of theologically thinking market minds, marketing minds, because we, um, we encourage and we empower the soul winners and then we give the soul winners roles in business and um, leadership in terms of financial management or um, asset management or production of media. And quite often they're not the best person for that job. There are some other minds in media that are passionate about the church that would do far better. But anyways, that's just the way the organisation is and we can't whinge about it. We actually have to put our money where our mouth is and just step out, and, uh, step out in faith and pursue our dreams and goals. That, that's cool, man. So I hear you say there's a place for, for, for somebody who may be watching this who may not feel called to be a pastor, but they're, they have a passion for, for marketing, for communicating, uh, for business. And there's a place for them in the church. There's a place hmm. we need their, those, those talents. The, the, God's movement needs that, those talents. Sure. More and more as everything moves online, Kyle, um, so, for example, the Adventist World Radio just did a huge campaign online. There's a huge team of web developers and um, app developers and uh, translators that are needed and uh, digital missionaries. We've got a digital missionary platform that has huge plans and potential to grow. And uh, we can't have all that stuff if we just expect theologians to manage the online world. Wow. And not all theologians are good at managing the online world. They're good at managing theology. And so let's let them do what they're good at and let's get other people to do what they're good at. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So Kyle, let me ask you this question. Not only have you been involved in the, in the, in the business management side, the project management side, but God also gave you a real entrepreneurial spirit and you had a dream to do something creative in ministry um, can you tell us about that and what, what happened with that? Yeah, we, um, we realized that there was a lack of a quality, long format strategic board game for Adventism. Hmm. I've since found out it has been tried once or twice before and it didn't quite stick. And uh, my dream and desire was to make this one stick, to make it a legacy product for every Adventist bookshelf. Um, yeah, a long format strategy game, not only to inspire members for total member involvement, but to educate people on the organizational structure and the potential for worldwide mission. Um, so yeah, we pursued that dream. It's called GoYe. And um, we started this, we launched this board game GoYe on Kickstarter with uh, $58,000 of funding. Um, so the, the Adventist community, the demand was there. If the demand wasn't there, we wouldn't have launched. And so it seems like enough other people believed in it and hasn't been hugely successful, but we've started and we tried and um, we'll keep trying. So how many, how many games have you produced Kyle and where is that at? Yeah, we, we, we did an initial print run of a thousand and there's about 750 now that have been sold. Um, so there's still, yeah, there's only a few to go, but uh, I guess there might not be as many strategic Adventist gamers as we thought there were. Um, there's a lot of, short format party gamers and so we've got a few products in the pipeline for that segment but um yeah really just products that aren't just for entertainment but actually educate as well i think it's important to um to do things with a purpose not just for the sake of distraction and so i'm pretty passionate about adding valuable content in those gaps if someone wants to find out more kyle about go ye um and how they can get one i don't i can tell you guys i have two of them actually and I've actually played the creator of the game himself, mm -hmm. Kyle Morris. It, it was a good effort. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good effort. I won't tell you how the score ended up, uh, but um, you, uh, but anyway, um, where do they go, Kyle, to find out more about the game? Sure. Yeah, the website is goye.games, and um, you'll actually have to go to goye.games even if you already own a board game because the uh, instructions aren't as complete in the box as what you might need to get your head around it. But at goye.games, you'll get redirected to Advent Source in the States or some local ABCs in Australia and New Zealand. Um, so that's where you'd go to find out more. And yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So Kyle, um, just one final question for you. As you've gone through um, you know, your journey and you've kind of been around some twists and turns and you've you've had your you know these ideas and these passions like starting the board game um you know we talked about digital evangelism the things you're involved in now 
what would you say to someone who's watching today who, you know, maybe God has given them, you know, a passion or an idea to pursue and it's not, it doesn't fit the, the cookie cutter. It's not, it's an out of the box idea. Like, you know, like your board game was, um, what would you say to that person? What encouragement would you give them today? Yeah, I think uh, ultimately the, the big things that make a different difference in this world uh, come from people who just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Like uh, this, it's very easy to give up and just to stop and think that something's too hard or to sit around and wait for the church to ring you up and say, hey, we love you and what you do. Here's $60,000. We want you to do it full time. That just doesn't often happen. The church uh, tends to employ or to spend money, invest money traditionally and conservatively for very good reason. I think it's up for up to the creatives uh, like myself and the entrepreneurs just to go out and make it happen. And we've seen time and time again, the people who have the determination to make it happen, those who help themselves, God can then help. And uh, for those that do just get out there and make something work and get some runs on the board, if the church sees value in it, they'll get involved. If they think you're doing a better job on your own, they'll leave you to it. Um, ultimately we're responsible to God for doing what he's called us to do and we can't just sit around waiting for the church to fund our dreams and aspirations um, we just we've got to get it done and we'll grow and we'll learn in that process and uh, hopefully grow the kingdom as well that's awesome well Kyle um, thank you so much for joining us today it's been great to see you you too, man. wish you all the best in your pursuits down there down under and, um, you know, if, again, if you want to find out more about Goyi, check out that website, goyi.games. Is that right? You get that right? That's it. That's right. right. And, um, and whatever God has laid on your heart, don't be discouraged. Keep pursuing that dream. And, and eventually, uh, by God's grace, you'll find it. Hmm. So thank you, Kyle. God bless you, man. And Thanks for your time, Kyle. All right. We'll see you around. Okay, see ya. All right. Wow. That was incredible. Are we live? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, welcome back, everybody. That was awesome. Um, I mean, d Kyle's ingenuity in creating that board game was really incredible. I mean, and I know we didn't get a chance to hear about all of it there on that interview. Um, and to be honest, that was very late at night. So if I seem tired, I was. But, um, you know, but the, 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 the idea of just taking an idea and starting something, mm -hmm. and you notice that Kyle actually put into practice the principle that Seth was talking about, mm -hmm. which is, you know, he didn't get in debt. He actually went to Kickstarter, mm -hmm. raised $58,000, and that's how they produced their board games. Wow. He didn't, hmm. you know, he didn't just go asking, you know, he was getting people to invest in it, and, and it worked. And, you know, he may take that and learn from it and go do something else later, mm -hmm. but the idea of just starting something, yeah. giving it a shot, even though it's, it's risky, I think there's some some wisdom in that. You know, and I just love the creativity and ingenuity behind it because it's like sometimes, I mean, just to be real, like I'm an INFJ, so I'm like, I need to change the world. <laughs> My next, you know, bright idea has to be worldwide epic, you know? But it was like, this is a board game. It's something fresh, fresh creative, right. new. And something that, you know, as just as everyday young professionals, we enjoy that kind of things, you know? So just interacting and relating in day-to-day -day life. I love the ideas mm. behind that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, guys, now you know, for the next game night, we have That's a right. game. Yeah. Th there, if you have a Saturday night game night, there is no other game that you should have besides <laughs> Go Ye. All right, anyway, that's the end of my promo. Um, but hey, before we go to our next segment, just a reminder to keep texting in mm -hmm. your responses to that question. How do you get an idea off the ground? Text 94,000. That's 94,000. Text your response there or put your comment in the comment section on the ASI website, and we would love to hear from you. But right now, we're gonna to go to our next YP highlight, Dr. Bowtie Brian, that's his, that's his special name. We love Brian, and uh, he's got a very awesome story to tell us about how God is using him as a young professional. Good morning. I am very privileged to be here right now with Dr. Bowtie Brian, and uh, Dr. Bowtie Bryan is someone that I have known for a number of years and is an awesome individual. And so I just, 
want him to share a little bit about who he is, what he does. So, so Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, Michelle, we've known each other for maybe almost 10, 10 plus years now. As a crazy, southern, right? That's crazy, man. It's really amazing. Those Southern years and now here we are, you know, actually getting a chance to do those things that we dreamed about all those years ago in the dorm, you know. It's uh, it's exciting. <laughs> It's exciting, you know, because I, I think uh, if you would have told me 10 years ago that today I would be a drug dealer, I don't think I would have believed you. And uh, it's exciting to have arrived. And so that leads me right into what it is that I do uh, professionally. I am a pharmacist, graduate of Southern Adventist University and two-time graduate of Loma Linda University, where now I serve in a community pharmacy as a pharmacy manager. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if many of us in college really thought about being a drug dealer for our future career. So <laughs> may have thought, of, thought about it on the DL, but uh, mm -hmm. very, cool, Brian, very cool. So cool. that's kind of your, your path, your day job, but mm -hmm. I've heard that you're also into some other things that you're doing a lot more than just that. So tell us a little bit about uh, your organizations that you're involved with and what you're doing. Correct. So, yeah, you know, I, I think that I became really passionate about this social entrepreneurship uh, bit, you know, the idea of actually generating business revenue to support making positive change in the community. And so my best friend, Dr. Sean Smith and I, we linked up in Loma Linda and we started Simba, which is our for profit. And there are so many different spaces and arms where Simba exists. Currently, we have Simba Academy, which is an online platform where people can do personal and professional development. But the social entrepreneurship really happens in Simba Center, where we have a nonprofit whereby we have been able to use a pharmacist physician collaborative practice model, which is fairly innovative in the pharmacy world and in the world of medicine as a whole, giving people access to healthcare. And right now we're focusing on the impoverished communities where such access is really needed. Wow. I, I mean, I hear these discussions, especially right now uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic right now, uh, there is a lot of talk about healthcare, access to healthcare, mm -hmm. the need for healthcare, who can get healthcare. Um, so, so tell me a little bit more, how, how are you doing this? How are you able to, to make a difference? Yeah, well, I am the CEO of Simba and Dr. Sean Smith is the executive director for Simba Center. And as a professor at Western University here in Southern California, during his interview, he pitched this vision that he and I have had, and he really laid it out on the table. We are passionate about seeing people better not only physically, but also socially, mentally, emotionally, and quite frankly, spiritually. And so Simba Center was granted him as his clinical practice site. And the two of us, me being a community pharmacist in, in that space and him being a professor with access to students and all types of other resources have really given it um, our best shot. And the Lord has opened up so many doors. Uh, starting last year in August, we started our LLC we, during this COVID season, found ourselves as one of the major partners in the city to help with triaging. And so far to date, we have gotten over $70,000 in grant money, which is all going to be funneled into investing in the community and meeting those needs. Wow. So this is all, this is all new. Yeah. Just in this, this short time frame, you have gone from, from just starting up a business to being a, a major player and con community contributor during mm -hmm. this. Yeah, correct. Wow. And, and I think that it's going to be wonderful when, you know, things, I guess you could say, resume and we find our new normal because everything that we're looking to do with the for-profit is really to see how we can leverage those resources to double down on what we already have going on in the nonprofit. And uh, it's really just the beginning, like you're saying, because it was not too long ago that we walked across that stage, Sean and I, thinking, man, it'll be so great to one day, 10 years from now, be able to walk in the doors of Simba Center. And honestly, before the year's out, I can see us breaking ground on what's going to be the beginning of an amazing hub where the community is really going to be blessed. Wow. Now, now, where are you located? Where are you doing this? So right now we are in Southern California, uh, not too far from Loma Linda. Uh, I live in Fontana, North Fontana, and we're investing in the high desert, which is going to be the Victorville, Hesperia, Apple Valley, and Adelanto area. Uh, it's definitely one of those controversial spaces. Adelanto is one of the only places in the country 
where they've allowed people to grow marijuana. And so it's a very impoverished space. And that business venture opened up to a city that almost got annexed. And so the types of resources that are available there and the efforts that are being put in are definitely needing other partners. And so it worked out nicely, especially during this COVID season where the needs were so great. And we just happened to be in the right place at the right time for the Lord to put us in a position where we could help. Now, is this what you you wanted to do? Did did you think, hey, I, I want to to finish my pharmacy school and and go to some small impoverished community and and set up there? Um, no, you know what ends up happening is you think maybe you'll get a job in some nice beach town in Southern California. <laughs> house and and your loans will disappear you know because they'll be like hey we'll forgive them because you live by the beach but no that's not how it happens you keep your loans and you get sent to no man's land but it was really the biggest blessing because the truth of the matter is those needs are so much more complex than i even appreciated now one of the things that sean and i are often uh, really reminiscing about is when we started to appreciate that healthcare only contributes to 20 percent of someone's quality of life the other 80% are these other socioeconomic factors. And so Loma Linda being a blue zone, for instance, is right across the highway from San Bernardino, which is the most unhealthy city in the country. And what you come to find is that these complex issues can really only be known when you spend time in them. And so while Sean was at residency, I was a community pharmacist in this space. And then I got really invested in the community. I joined a lot of these um, social organizations where people are in these civic spaces trying to tackle these problems. And I realized there are individuals who for decades have been spending their time trying to um, lift up the people. But many of the, the issues are just because there aren't individuals who are skilled in the areas of need, like healthcare, who are willing to go to these spaces. And so since I found myself there begrudgingly, uh, we just decided, you know what, let's go ahead and put some roots here and let's see how we can learn how to serve better. And so did I plan on it? No. Um, am I happy we're there? Absolutely. You know, this is huge because I think we, we know about wanting to basically be able to um, meet people's needs, mm -hmm. but sometimes we don't know how. I, I know it's hard to just get into a community and really know what's going on in that community and what that community needs. And it, it looks like you guys are going beneath the surface. Like you're, you're doing a lot more than just uh, passing out meals or things that are good, but you're, you're trying to get into the fabric of this community and the real needs and solutions. Yeah. And, and I think one of the beautiful things, Simba being a, uh, a, of Swahili origin, you know, my, my family is from Kenya. You can see that right here. I have my little flag. I'm a dual citizen. Uh, Simba from my childhood, before I even appreciated that it has a Swahili references from the Lion King, right? You, you have a, a young guy who's trying to figure his life out. He meets up with Timon and Pumbaa, yeah. and he kind of runs away from his purpose in life. But the thing is, just like with our spiritual journeys, the Lord catches up to us and, and helps us to realize that we're in our place in this life for such a time as this. And we head back to Pride Rock, and we defeat our evil uncles, and we reestablish the balance in the circle of life. And so Simba, spelled the way that we have it, is not S-I-M-B-A, but S-Y-M-B-A, pulling off of the Latin prefix that you see in words like symbiosis, because mm -hmm. our tagline is better together. And so going back to that Disney classic, it is about the circle of life and realizing that everything exists in a delicate balance. And those of us who find ourselves in positions of influence, which is really all of us, should realize that we're only as good as we're better together. And so that's really something that we've appreciated because there are so many people who are passing out meals, who are giving Bible study, but they're siloed. And they're the biggest needs, not only in the resources that are being funneled into the community, but in the resources actually existing in some type of a collaborative practice where we're able to lean on one another and bear one another's burdens. Wow. So thank you so much, Brian. I, I love this time. Um, and I think that's really inspiring message for other young professionals that there's a lot of ways to make a difference and there's a lot of need for that. So, Absolutely. Thank well, you thank so much. It has been great meeting you. Uh, yeah.
context on Zoom here and getting to talk about what you're doing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us.